SoundCloud. Okay. So we are now recording. I'm very happy to welcome you all to our, is this our sixth or seventh or 10th um, Open Green Map demonstration and discussion. And today we have, um, I'm very glad that um, we have a, a um, nice group in the room. I'm just gonna do a couple of quick intro slides um, that, um, and just wanna say that, you know, we're an open source organization. Climate health is one of our big focuses. What is a green map? It's a locally made map about nature, culture, social justice, and green living. We've worked with uh, people in 65 countries so far all kinds of groups, including um, municipalities, universities, grassroots groups, everything in between. And there have been lots of creative applications of this concept, but many of the, all, everything is linked by our iconography. So um, this now is 170 symbols. That's our main iconography. And we now have two extensions of the iconography, one around um, recovery, another around food that we're just getting out there. Um, we've linked them to the SDGs. Um, many of the net maps have been made to date. Are, I mean, initially were made on paper, as you can imagine, or as experiences, um, rather immersively done at the bottom, which is the um, Aichi Green Map at the World's Fair of 2005. But all along, we've been collecting people's outcomes and sharing them in new ways to help other people get going. And many of these things have been co-created with Green Map projects around the world. And we are continuing to learn from people, um, including the users of our first platform that led into the second platform. So new, today we're going to be looking at Open Green Map 2, new opengreenmap.org. On the right is the browse page where you can see maps, icons, and sites. And on the left here are some of the features. And there's a lot there. So I'm going to encourage you to visit greenmap.org slash story slash OGM2 to learn more about the features. This is some of the ways the maps can look. And um, now I'm going to turn it over to Alexandra and Bogdan. Um, you'll also hear from Mary in a little bit. Um, and I will stop sharing. So welcome, everybody. Hey, Peter, thanks for joining us. He's also in New York. Hello, and welcome from my side as well. So I'm going to start. Um, I'll try to share my screen. Can you see? Yes. Great. So um, today I'm going to focus on campaigns. Um, as I mentioned in a previous demo, we made campaigns in order to make it more um, accessible to create projects where data is crowdsourced on maps. Um, so uh, today I want to show you a bit more about how to further customize what questions uh, can be added to a campaign. So I already have a um, test campaign here. Uh, I remembered that, oh, go ahead, Wendy. I was just gonna say, the campaign is a quick way to engage people very briefly in your project. So that's what we're gonna be testing today. I could even, I'm even ready to put up a new one, but go ahead and show us how do you do the extended one. Right. Um, yeah, Wendy, you can uh, definitely go through the campaign topic more. And if there are questions about how to set it up, we can also go through that um, after this. Um, if there are more people who are new to it, uh, I'm happy to share more about that. So I um, already have a campaign. Uh, I remember that uh, a few years back, me and Bogdan participated in a Greenpeace campaign in Romania to map uh, trees in a virgin forest. And we spent two weeks in a camp. We went and did tree measurements. And I imagined maybe there are some tre valuable trees in urban settings as well. So if we would like to create a campaign to gather more information about them, to I'll be able to advocate for their protection. This is how it might look. I created it in the Berlin area where I am. 
Um, and the campaign has a general question. Um, tell us more about this tree. Uh, and people can also select one or more icons that also are appropriate for the place and the tree. And they can add a picture with a tree. I can use the same one uh, and submit points. So let's say, Um, I'll choose a place in Berlin to add this tree, maybe here. And I will submit. So um, as soon as I do that, the tree will be added to my map. Um, but maybe since I am uh, mapping trees, I want to get more specific data about them. So maybe I want to guide people to provide certain information like the tree diameter or the tree species, because maybe they don't know to provide this otherwise. So um, I'm going to try to set this campaign up in order to be able to do that. I already have a team because this is uh, necessary for working with maps and campaigns. This is my team. Uh, and I already have a map on which the sites from the campaign are added. So as you can see, uh, this site that I just added, a Telia tree with beautiful crown is already on the map with the icons that I chose. Um, if I look at the campaign, oops, I'm getting the, in edit mode, I can see that the campaign has a, a primary icon that is mandatory and it has some optional icons that people can choose. Um, on our platform, the questions that come up in uh, the campaign are related to the icons. So since special tree is a green map uh, icon, I would like to create my own uh, tree icon that has some extra questions. So I'm going to do that. Uh, once you log in, the plus menu option will give you all of the things you can add on the platform. Since I already have a team, a map, and a campaign, now I'm going to add an icon set. So I'll add it to my team. This is just for demo purposes. And that's it. So now I should have a new icon set here. And I'm going to add this tree icon with questions. So I'm going to name it old tree. I'm going to spend a lot of time on this. Uh, but what is nice is that I don't need to use a different icon. I could search for the special tree icon that I used before and use it uh, use the same image. Now, if I want to customize it, I can also save this image and I can um, edit the SVG so that it has some particular colors or badge that I would, I may want on my map. So I'm going to add this icon. And now how do I add the questions? Here under attributes, let's say I want to, people to tell me what the diameter is. I can also write a help message if that's useful. For example, um, and I want this value to be a decimal. Maybe I also want to know uh, the species. And this is a text and um, an interesting thing might, might also be if it's a biotope. So for example, uh, it might have woodpecker uh, or breeding cavities. 
cavities. I guess I suppose that's correct. <laughs> and this will be a yes and no uh, question. So once I save these, uh, I now have my own icon with the tree and I can go back to um, my map, first of all, to add my new icon set. Oh, it's already uh, in the list. And now when I go back to my campaign with old trees and edit it, uh, instead of using this special tree icon, I'm going to replace it with my own. Here it is. And that's it. Now it's been saved. And if I want to contribute to this campaign, uh, again, I have the general question. I can choose icons. And now I also get the special questions that I set up before. So now I can say it's 27 centimeters, Telia, and I'm not sure if it's a biotope. So um, now my old entry um, becomes more specific and it has information that maybe uh, is needed or more useful. Um, So I will submit this entry as well. And now if I go on my map, it should already be, I think it's this one. Yes. So I already see that it has a diameter and the species is uh, also noted there. Um, so this, allows us to create campaigns that have specific questions. And of course I can add more icons and more questions to those icons and include them in the campaign. But this is in a nutshell, how you would uh, create a campaign uh, with, um, with certain questions other than the name and the description of the site. So, so this is fairly like advanced into it. I see Mary has a question. Um, go ahead, Mary. Um, yes, if you're out in the field and you're on a phone, how do you click it into place? I mean, this is a silly question for an old person, okay? But <laughs> young children and old people, I'm gonna speak for them today. Mm -hmm. uh, so if, uh, let's say that I'm gonna to try to simulate how this looks on a phone, something like this. And I'm gonna move this, right? So this is how the campaign would look like on a phone. Uh, and because the phone has a GPS, uh, it would show the current location already on the map if you are right in front of the tree. So I wouldn't need to choose any location. But you can, you can click the green pencil to change the location. Exactly. As well. So you, you would be able to adapt or move the point around like this. And here it is selected. Um, and you would type in on your uh, phone keyboard, select icons, add pictures, of course, from your phone, or you could take a picture. Uh, and here you fill in again the data and you submit. So this is how it would look like on a phone. And the GPS location is of course more accurate than it is on my laptop currently. Great, thank you. So we're doing this today and we've created a bit.ly, a little short code. So it's easy for people to use it. We're bringing an extra laptop too. So if people want to use ours instead of their own phone, they can. We also made a QR code and we made posters that we're going to put up around the park. So hopefully people will say, well, this is interesting and, and give it a try. So this is one way of engaging people in your map. One of the things that um, to me that's really interesting about this, these sites do not appear to the public on your map until you have gone in and made them public. And at that time, you might say, gee, um, 
this is not very well written or these words are fragmented, you can fill in the rest of the text if you want. You can also change the first icon, the, the primary icon. And all you need to do to, to change it is to click one of the other icons and then it will appear in that position. So it's really flexible for you, the map maker, even if you know, okay, everybody's collecting trees, when you're finalizing it, you may say, ah, it's, it's, a, um, it's a tree in a park rather than a tree by the side of the road kind of mm -hmm. thing. And as you can see, you can already tell from by visiting this map that I have that these are not published because they have this small icon. So this is only for um, internal use because uh, if I visit the same map on a browser where I'm not logged in, let's try to open up private window. I hope you you might not be able to see it though. Uh, do you see my new window? Yep. Oh no. Mm. Uh, we still see the clo the ones that are hidden. You might have to reshare. Mm -hmm. I will try. Trying to stop sharing. Doesn't want to. Okay, I managed to. <laughs> Okay, so here I'm not logged in. And you can see that I only see the public uh, spaces, uh, the public published sites, but I don't see the ones that had the, uh, I, the banner, I guess the, how do you call this? Uh, the small icon on top of the icon. <laughs> <laughs> the marker. Exactly, the marker. Yeah. So, um... I'm looking forward to testing this today. We're asking people about how do they feel because we're I'm working with the group concerned with air quality. And um, I don't know, maybe we could take this down a second and see if people want to t hear a little bit more about the basics or see more about this and another way to engage the public. Mm -hmm. as, I'm, as I'm watching this, I'm seeing another application. Because I'm out here in the hinterlands of the Northwest where we don't have a lot of roads that tell you where you are. And if I was out walking property and then I put a, a, a marker, a tree, you know, call it whatever I want, but a dot on that marker, walk to another point, do another one, walk to another point. And when I get back home, I can connect the dots yes. with your outline tool on this obscure piece of land that had no other way of marking that. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And Folks, you know, I don't know if you know, um, could you stop sharing, Alexander? Yes, I'm, I'm sorry. I am pressing on stop sharing, but <laughs> for some reason, oh, okay, we're managed. There we go, <laughs> thank you. Um, do you know, you can already upload a Map My Ride file, or if you've gone on a, you know, use Strava or uh, any kind of walking app that gives you a, what's the name of the file? GPX. GPX. You can upload that immediately. And it's very fast way to put a line on your map. And then you can go back and put those um, special trees or whatever is on there too. Um, so um, does anybody have any questions? Because I know this is new for a lot of people. Have, you haven't seen the, any parts of this inside yet. <laughs> okay, good. Um, Mary has been working with this platform in, I want to say a little bit outside the box ways. We're still discovering things. And will you show us one thing that you've made? Um, gee, <laughs> hold on. Let's see. I wasn't prepared for that, but maybe I can be. Um, oh, I thought you can show the paper version. Oh, okay. That sounds like a great idea that I can do. <laughs> All right, let me I have to take. All right, what I find is, you know, the uh, old adage is that if you're blind man and an elephant, you know, you're on the tusk or something else, you can feel that part, but you can't see the elephant. What I'm finding out here, making my new map is that people couldn't see what I was doing. So I took all the icons and made, printed them off of all the sites that are on the map and rolled that out on a table the other day and then they got it. 
is I'm working backwards instead of as an engagement tool to begin with and get everybody together. I put this thing together first to get people to understand at a glance what was going on. And now I can get them engaged kind of on the back end. So it's, you know, it's a marketing tool slash engagement tool, community organizing tool, all those kind of things. But it's another way so people can actually see the impact of what's going on. Here's another an example. As soon as I showed it to them, they said, oh, well, we have to have nothing but online maps because they are always live and they're always going to be accurate where a printed map is no longer accurate the moment that you print it. And I said, okay. And I had all these maps that Wendy gave me out on the table. And then one saw a map of Victoria and before she left, she says, I want that map. Of, can I have that map of Victoria? And I said, uh, well, um, first of all, it's the only one I have. So I'll send you, you know, a PDF or something else so you can have that. But number two, it's printed. Why would you want it? Tactile, <laughs> like the printed map. It shows the whole thing at once. They can be engaged in the whole idea at once instead of the little piece that they came in on. And that's why. So that was so <laughs> Yeah, for sure. And we do have the ability to export from OGM2, put it into QGIS, and from there you can make a print map. Is that right? Has, has anybody tested it yet? Yeah? <laughs> and QGIS lets you customize it some, but it's, it's, you know, when you make a print map, you can put in so much other stuff with it. Um, but you still have the, the important part, which is the map itself in a very direct way. So that's good. Um, thank you. Bogdan, do you want to say something? Um, I'm not sure <laughs> if I should show some. See. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if you if I should yeah. show some of the features that we developed in the past uh, months, because they might be too specific. Um, if you want to, I can do this. And also I have a mention, for example, Mary, um, I know that she said that she's using a spreadsheet to centralize all the data for, for her map. She now can use this uh, uh, icon attribute in order to, to give more structure for the content for this uh, site. So those attributes are not, um, available for campaigns, but you can use it everywhere on, on your maps, even if you didn't collect the data uh, from a campaign. So, for example, if you chose, if you made the icon about organic and local food, you added an attribute that said 90% organic or greater, um, that would appear for every site, right? That it would have that um it it will attribute. work like a, it will work like a regular icon so this icon has to be added to the sites and then you'll have the option to fill in these attributes very interesting so i want to take a temperature check though i see joanne has joined us from scotland glasgow is that right joanne Maybe she's not there right now. And Mike has joined us. And you're in South Africa, is that correct, Mike? Joanne replied in the chat. I see that. That's good. Um, so I wonder, do people want to see the basic info on how do you set up a, a new team and map? Or do you want to go further into some of the details today? We have a lot of new people here. I'm definitely new to it. So if, if we do some of the beginning stuff, I'd be interested in that. I would vote for the beginning also. OK. Thank OK, you. so maybe I can uh, show a bit of the workflow as you get started. Um, let me share again. It's actually really, once you get into it, it's pretty easy um, and exciting because you can have sites on your map in minutes. So. I hope you can see okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so once um, I make an account, um, 
as I mentioned before, now I'm located in Berlin, so <laughs> it was zoomed in here, but um, I can actually see places from all, all over the world. Um, as I mentioned, this plus menu has everything you need to get started and more, <laughs> but the good place to get started is from your team. So the team is the entity that manages uh, the ownership of everything that you have on the platform. So if you want to start a new project on GreenMap, you might first want to make a team. Um, and invite uh, others who have created um, accounts on the platform and give them the appropriate role. So uh, we have a table with um, the documentation of what every kind of member can do, uh, but it's pretty intuitive. So owners have the most rights, leaders can edit other people's data, members can edit their own data and guests can only see uh, things from uh, the team's private data, but they cannot uh, alter it. So right now I am the only one in my team that I could add Voltan because he's already registered and I will add him as an owner as well. So once I have a team, I can create a map. And you would put your, you know, the name of the team, you'd probably add your logo or some image, maybe even add a little line about your aims there as well. Yes, good point. So we do have these placeholders, but we expect that people will um, fill in uh, the details of their project. Uh, so I'm going to associate this new map in Berlin. Well, maybe I want to map green places. <laughs> I'm sure there are more interesting projects that you have. Um, and now once I have a map, um, I can customize it. So it's quite important to add images for it so that people can have a visual cue, they can find it easily. Um, not all of the settings are required, but for example, your the extent of the map uh, shows in which area you are focused. So if I'm focused on Berlin, I will probably set an extent around here because this is where most of the places that are added on the map will be. Uh, and of course, in order for the map to be visible by people, it's important that you make it public. Um, I can, in terms of icon sets, we already have on the platform the default ones, which are the green map icons, which are quite rich and expressive. So maybe these are good enough for you. The SDGs are also default, but as I showed you before, you can also add your own if, um, if you have specific icons that you need or want. Uh, Wendy, did you want to add anything? Um, I was just gonna say on the cover photo, you want a pretty good photo. Mary came up with the idea of putting her logo right in the middle of this oblong photo and it shows up perfectly. Or you can have a separate image. The smaller square image appears on the browse page. The wider image appears on the maps uh, front page. So it's all of this is in the tutorial and we have video versions as well as print versions of this with all the details about size and things like that. So it's not yeah. too bad. I haven't prepared any images, but maybe for now I can post. I can upload this one to have one image. Uh, I, this is um, all you need to get started. And as you go along and learn more and need more functionality, then you can get more in, in depth into other options that we have. So it's very configurable, but please don't be overwhelmed because the default options will work if you um, set the visibility of the map, a nice description, a photo, and the icons that you use. So now, now once I have a map, uh, I can already see that um, I have a page, but I have no data on it. Um, this is what campaigns are good for because I could create a campaign that enables people to contribute to the map or I could add the sites myself or as I think Joanne uh, was asking, I could import data. So actually I do have here, um, 
a, a CSV file that I will import. You probably can't see because I just shared the screen, but I will show you how you can import data. So there is this map files page. Um, and I am now searching for my CSV file. I would actually like to show you briefly the file, so I will share again. Okay. So this is my map data comma separated values file. If uh, LibreOffice wants to cooperate. <laughs> um, and we also have a tutorial about importing uh, data, but I, I won't go much into detail. What's important is to know that you need some columns and I already have them here. So for example, the map that I want to put the places on, the name of the place, the description, their position, uh, the icons that I want to use, and I can have two icons or one or more, and the visibility of the points. So zero means that they're private, as I showed you before. Um, we also have this pending visibility, um, but if you put them as private, that's also fine. So now I'm going to, as you can see here, I, I have a map. I'm going to take the ID of my map that I just created now. This is my ID. And I will uh, replace it here. So that all the sites are added on my newly created map. And I'll show you how uh, now how I can populate my map with some files. So I will upload this file here. Press on import. And it seems like uh, eight points were imported. Let's check on the map. And here they are. So they don't have any picture. And this is a recent feature that we uh, made. In, instead of having a gray screen, we now have a colorful pattern uh, that is randomized. So you can see that all tiles are different, but we, of course, encourage you to add pictures to them. So this is the first step you get uh, your d raw data in the platform um, with the CSV, for example, if you don't want to manually add it via plus or via the campaigns. And now I can um, edit the sites. I can edit the description via the edit page. Maybe I want to edit the name the description, as you can see, we have an editor, more info, <laughs> you get the idea. I can, uh, as Wendy said, I can switch the icon that is the primary one or choose a different one. Uh, maybe I want to select a self-built house and I want this to be the primary icon. Um, I can adjust the position if that's necessary. I can add photos. I can add sound files. Uh, and this should be good to go. So once I am happy with it, I can publish it. Set its visibility to public. And now it will be visible on my map. If I go to the map view. You can see all of these private points, but also the this one that is already public. So this is a whole workflow of creating your team, your map, and adding sites on the map and editing them. Can Are there any? Yeah. Oh, can you show us a proposal site? Right click, you know, because you can right click right on the map mm -hmm. and add yes, a site so that way. Uh, if you would like to propose a site at a certain location, you can. Uh, you can click on propose a site, and this is the 
add a site form, which is similar to the campaign, but uh, it has uh, fields that are somehow uh, different. So as you can see, it already selected the map that I was on and I can add um, a new place. What should this be? Maybe a special tree since we were talking about trees. I can add a picture and the icons that are appropriate for it. Um, maybe the special tree one, of course. Put this first, and I can, as a contributor to the map, submit this. Um, and uh, it will be reviewed by the team. As you can see, by default, it's private. Um, your team members can review the data and make it public when once they are happy with the quality of the data. So if I make it public, I now should be able to see it on my map. Here it is, my special tree place. Great. And this makes it easy when you are not um, on your phone at that location, but maybe you know where you want to add a place. This right click uh, functionality allows you to quickly set the, the position of that site. Are there any other questions about this workflow? I know that it may seem a, a bit complicated at first. Um, we have a question related to who owns the data once it's added. Um, maybe you can show the license field. Mm -hmm. Right. So, um, as I said, the team manages the data that is proposed on a, a map and it's published by the team. So, they have the responsibility. Uh, but we also have for a map, a license field. So here you can say that uh, this data is Creative Commons license or you can add a copyright. And we also allow the possibility to add a URL because there are established licensing models. So if you Google uh, licenses, then you will find links that describe what this license mean and what it entails. Uh, and so you can add this URL. So let's say that I want to add a Creative Commons license. Do you know, Bogdan, where I can find the link? Or can I use this one directly? Oh, um, sorry. You need to press use and remix. Yep. And here you have a bunch of options that help you to generate the license. You mean like this one, right? Yes. So this is an example of a type of license and I can copy it here and I can describe it like this and save. So once I do this, everyone who will visit my map for example, in map mode, they will see this license here at the bottom and they can click and uh, check what this means. So this is what determines how the data on the map is licensed. Okay, there... so when you, if you use this common uh, license mechanism, uh, the people who have entered the data, do they still own the data or does it become public? If they just want to map things for themselves, can they do that and put it on this map system? Or does that automatically get shared with anybody who opens this file? Um, so maybe Wendy can address more from the privacy policy in terms of service, but in, in terms of access to the data, uh, as I showed you, uh, by default, all the data is private. So if someone contributes to this map, for example, via Propose a Site, 
only the team members, only these people who are in the team will be able to see that data. And if you want as a team to keep your data private for uh, any reason, maybe it's sensitive data that you don't want to share, but you would like to collect it um, from others, or maybe you already have the data, then you can add it in private mode and uh, it will not be visible to anyone else, only to your team. Okay, so, thank you. Yeah, and we so, Green Map is open source in general. There's a page on our main website about the license, which I admit it's not too clear, but it does use the Creative Commons 4.0, which means uh, share alike, uh, give us attribution, and um, non-commercial. So um, it's it's a little tricky, and we're building in more license options. Is that right? That people will be able to um, select whether or not people can use your data. Mm -hmm. Yeah, usually though the team is in control. So for example, we use the same platform for a project that um, is mapping free-living bee colonies. And uh, for, for a science project, for example, you may want to have certain data made public, but certain data provided by research institutes, maybe you want to keep private. And this is a possibility. So you can have some sites like this one public and some sites private, which means that only your team can access that data and no one outside of your team will see it on the map. Yeah, in, in, term, in terms of features, I want to mention that uh, if you want to uh, not share all the data, so for example, in a campaign, you want, might, might want to add some private data, you can mark these attributes as private. So the questions will be there in the campaign, but if you publish the site, uh, those answers, I mean, those values for the questions won't be published. Uh, only the team members will have access to this data. Yeah, so this and, is, uh, Bogdan is talking about this option. We, we also wanted to take into account that, for example, for a scientific project or citizen science project, you may want to collect the diameter of a tree, but you may not want to publish it to protect the tree or so. So you can make this private, which means that people will get the question in the campaign, but then when you publish the point, uh, this data will not be published. That's really handy. That's very good. Um, when you think of all the vulnerabilities out there, that's exactly. a nice new feature. So yeah. folks, one, I don't know if you know, but we learn things every time. There's new things built every single time we get together. Go ahead, Bogdan. Um, in terms of privacy, we also have the ability to mask the, the geometry. So, for example, if you spot uh, something like you don't want to be destroyed, but you still want to have it on the map, um, we can approximate the coordinates in, in a way that people don't know where they are. Um, and yeah, we developed this for the Honeybee Watch project because they wanted to uh, hide where these uh, uh, bee hives are. And it's pretty useful for uh, some projects. That's very interesting. I see Dan has joined us. Hi, Dan. Where are Hi you? Hi there. From? Hi. Um, uh, I'm in uh, Arizona. I'm a professor at Arizona State University. Wow. We're, we're doing, we've had so many interesting people here today. It's wonderful. Um, now, we only have about 15 minutes left. Are there some questions or something people want to go over or learn about? while we have everybody here? I'm, I, I do have a quick question. Um, um, thank you so much. And by the way, the, the presentation that you gave last week um, at the uh, PGIS uh, conference was just fabulous, really inspiring. Um, I, I wondered if, uh, and I'm sorry I, I arrived late this morning. I've only been here on for a couple of minutes. Um, I had a late night last night here in Arizona. But in any case, um, has there been any integration uh, with uh, mobile apps and green map? Is, is there a clear pipeline between 
uh, the development of apps for work in the field. And I'm sure there has, I just, I just don't know. So I apologize for not doing my homework before <laughs> asking the question. <laughs> no problem. Um, back down. go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we get this okay, question sorry. a lot. No, <laughs> no, 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 no it's good. So um, our website, the web app that you just saw, it's optimized to work on a mobile phone. So it should work from any browser that you have installed. So as long as you have internet, it works. Uh, we were struggling to create an Android and iOS app that work native and you can install from the app store, but so far we didn't have enough resources to finish them. We started working on both, but we still need some more time in order to be able to publish them on the app stores and have offline access and so on. Mm -hmm. yeah, so in terms of offline um, work in, in the field, uh, there aren't any integrations yet, but we've been also looking at open source apps like QField that we can integrate with. Uh, and that is an option that we are considering. It's um, on our priorities list, but not, apparently some things get at the top more than, or more at the top than this. Yeah, and usually if you have um, a GIS um, person in your team, they would be, able to get um, the data from apps like QField and import it to the green map. But uh, there, we, there's no user-friendly way so far to help you to import data mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. from the mobile apps right now. But we and are working on it. There is a trick, which is, you know, you can save it to your home screen. Um, and then you can, especially the campaigns, which you didn't get to see, we did this at the beginning, but it's a, you know, kind of a quick way to grab the location, the title, a little bit about it, which you can customize and a picture. And that can be added to later. So, um, and you could, I just put a, a home, you know, save to home screen button here for today's event um, to be able to access it quickly. So I'm, so glad we have a web app and not these native apps myself right now because it's less updating. You know, Apple and uh, Androids are constantly changing. Mm -hmm. This way we have one thing to change. And for us, it's um, that's a plus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But to be able to store that data until you get back into Wi-Fi mode, yeah, that's another thing. You could take the picture, et cetera, always. Um, yeah. And we'll be happy to stay. I could stay on a minute and show you that if you want. Um, are there other questions? And, and you know, uh, Mary, I don't know if you were going to add anything else from your experience. Uh, Mary began in January of last year with a... Um, I say it is just trying to make an artisanal food map. And when the pandemic came, very quick pivot uh, locally to address uh, food security issues and engage local people. And I love their project called, which is Feed Food Education and Enterprise Development. And in an area like hers in the Pacific Northwest, it's a game changer for people. Do you want to say something else? Sure. It's, it's been an interesting focusing tool. So a lot, everybody wants to do, and we, I'll be talking to the farmer's market people here shortly, because we're in such a small area. It's on a peninsula. There's 9,000 people in the town. And so there's a lot of crossover of interest and in who wants to do what. What I heard the other day was because there is so much crossover, the farmers are answering the same questions over and over and over. And the benefit of Green Map is they could put up one site and have it on five different maps. So the farm tour is one map, farmer's markets one map, what we're doing for the schools is one map, and all their information goes to all these different maps. So that's a real asset. So I'm learning as I go how to sell this and position it, because how it's been done, it's real strength is as a collaborative community building tool that everybody gets their hands into and builds it as they go. And uh, the, except the, uh, uh, when he told me the other day that the Victoria map, which I absolutely love, took five years and 200 people to put together, where my map took me 
and a month and a half because I knew what I wanted to do and I could just grab it and put it together. That, But I didn't build community out. So now I need to start building the community and get the engagement part put together on the other side. So you have to pick one or the other. And I would say at least have maybe if I had to do it again, maybe five people on your team representing the different factions that you want to make sure are on the map and then go for it. Otherwise you're kind of in a vacuum and it's the Mary Hunt show. Aren't I doing great? <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you don't have anybody to tell you no and question, you know, a direction or whatever. So that would be my suggestion. And I know that uh, Joanne had a few questions uh, before the session. I tried to cover the uh, upload from CSV, and I don't know if you were here, Joanne, when, when I showed the uh, inheritance of icons, but uh, if you still have open questions, please let us know right into chat if you cannot uh, talk and I can further clarify. No, I'm at a different part now, so I can... I'm okay. But, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, no, Wendy actually I answered quite a few of my questions really nicely on email. So, um, and that was really helpful to see how to like input it, uh, the CVS files. So I'll definitely be taking that onto my map. So yeah, thank you. Um, I think we're looking into uh, creating our own. So basically, if we're making a map in Glasgow for COP, which is coming up in November. Um, so we want to make our own icons um, and take the green map icons and maybe even just like add like a COP26 banner or something like onto uh, the like hub icon so that people can see the map and see that um, it's like COP specific and it's there for COP. So yeah, I asked about that and but yeah, I think I might have missed that at the start, but it's something I can kind of look at the tutorials on as well, I think. You know, we'll post this video too. And there was a good um, explanation of how do you make them, you know, exactly what you're talking about. So that's great. I'm really excited that this map will be part of the climate conference. That's the COP in, uh, it's November, December? This yeah, year? November, hopefully. Hopefully it's not postponed, but yeah, no, hopefully in November. I think there'll be a lot of attention paid to what Glasgow is doing about this. And I know you're there's a lot going on there, so it'll be fantastic. Um, let us know if we can help you more with that. That's really great. Yeah, we will do. Thank you. Your help's been really appreciated at the moment, so thank you. <laughs> yeah, sure. We're happy to help everybody. And um, if you'd like me or um, to talk further with Alexandra and Bogdan, we're totally, or Mary, we're totally available <laughs> to meet with you or talk to a class. And, um, you know, let's see what we can do to help you uh, strategize and make this project really sing. We have so many local examples of things that worked that we can share. Um, so we're happy to do that. Yeah, and, and specifically on data import from CSV files, uh, I want to make a disclaimer that this is an area of the app that I think needs some love from the developers from us. So um, it, it works, but if at any point you need help or there is confusion, we are definitely looking forward to improve this. So don't hesitate to uh, ask and we will try to assist and fix any issues. Yeah. So we're all really part of the development team and um, we're really lucky to have Alexandra and Bogdan who are receptive to your needs and wants. And you know that ain't that often that we see this incredible gift. So thank you so much. Um, are there any other questions that people have today? Because we could stop, we could follow up and repeat a little bit at the end if we like. But um, um, I'm really glad to see so many um, happy faces from so many places. And, you know, you can do so much to change perceptions and also to engage people who are even on the margins in your community through this process. And um, you can make many different types of maps and address so many different kinds of issues. Um, we didn't show you that once a site is on the platform on, a, on one map, it's very easy to show it on others. Mary alluded to that, but that's always a feature that people like to know about. Any other last questions? I'll stop the tape. <laughs> okay, let me stop that. Ah, stop. Okay, stop cloud. <laughs>